Hey, this is Manly with VerticalLessons.com. As you probably know by now, in reading through my chapter in World Class Speaking in Action, I am not a big fan, and most expert professional speakers out there and coaches will tell you that having text-heavy slides in your PowerPoint presentation are the number one way to put your audience to sleep, disconnect from them, not deliver with clarity and connect with your message. So let me show you a hidden feature that I discovered after many, many years of using PowerPoint. Uh, now, I want to I confess something as well. I'm going to use an example that was a real example for me in the corporate world. I found an old presentation, and I was stunned when I looked at it. It's really, it does all the things that I coach and uh, encourage people not to do now. So I'm going to use one of my real presentations. I'm going to go back, and we're going to transform it with a hidden tool. So here's a great way for you to liven up and take text-heavy bullet points and make them look really engaging fast. Okay, we're going to hop over here. Here it is. This is a real slide that I had in a presentation with a small team in the corporate world. Lots of text. I uh, didn't know any better. I opened up PowerPoint. Nobody taught me. I had to start typing, so I didn't know. Uh, maybe you're in the same situation. Here's what I would do now going back if I were my own client. What we're going to do first is looking at this slide, there are a few things that are going to um, get in the way of us leveraging this tool. First of all, as you see here, I have one big bullet point at the top here. And then I have sub-bullet points with a lot of text. So I'm going to rebuild that. First of all, I want to actually take this answer to my question, and I'm going to put this up here in the heading. And then I'm going to move all these bullet points over. Cut that, paste it up here, so that that's part of uh, our heading. Now, I'm going to just slide it down just a little bit. Remember, we have the super secret little four-way cross. It's a little tricky. Slide that down a little bit with the down arrow key, a little more precise than using the mouse there. Now, we have these text-heavy uh, bullet points here. I would probably go back and re-wordsmith these and get these tighter as well into single words or 10-word or less statements. For now, let's just get to the feature I want to show you. And we're first going to come up here, and I'm going to use the uh, decrease list level button, the secret button here in the paragraph group. It's going to push all those over. And what we also need to do is go ahead and take uh, these sub, these are actually two sub points here that really will be better suited as their own bullet point. So let me come over here and hit that uh, indent again and come down here again and then move this over this last point, decrease the list levels, what they call it. So now we have three bullet points because they're really three supporting points. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and use the feature that I want to show you. It's called Convert to Smart Art. So what we're going to do is actually click on the border at the edge of this placeholder, they call it, this box of text. Now we're going to come up here to this button. I'm on the Home tab. I'm in the Paragraph group right here. In the Convert to Smart Art button right here, we're going to click this drop-down, and it's going to give us a lot of different options. In this case, I would probably pick the one here, Continuous Block Process, just hover over each of them. It's going to give you a, a live preview of what it's going to look like and pick one. Now, I would also encourage you not to worry about being perfect. It has to be finished before you can make it perfect. So just get something done, and it will be better than what you have. And we'll fine-tune it here in a moment. So I'm going to click on this one. Boom, we're done. It actually converted it over to Smart Art. Now, it's not the, that compelling visually, the colors it shows. We can drop down here. We are actually, since we are clicked on the Smart Art object, we have a special tab set that's come up over here in purple. And there are two tabs, Design and Format. So we're going to click on the Design tab in this case. We are in the Change Colors group, and it's going to give us some quick preview of different colors we can pick. And I think any of them are probably better than what we had. If you want different colors for each of the stages, you could do that. Uh, I think more contrast in the color is one thing I'm looking for right away. I think I'm going to do a stage of uh, different blues. It picks relevant colors, which is nice, that uh, don't conflict with the colors you've already picked. Now that we have these colors changed, let me show you two other things you may want to be aware of. First of all, here we have Smart Art Styles. This is a good way to make it look really professional fast. I mean, just quickly in a couple hovers here, I've got a nice 3D version of it. Uh, here's a heavier 3D if you want, or seriously 3D. You can also click over here this little bitty hidden drop-down arrow. And now you can see uh, there's even more options here. Kind of gets crazy if you want a 3D 
transformation of it. I'm going to stick with something, you know, reasonably impactful, but not too crazy. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I like to go just really simple and clean. Depends on your mood, your style, the setting, the audience. Let's check out, uh, we'll go with the 3D one. So I picked that 3D one. looks great. looks much better than the previous tech slide here. So we have, I want to show you in case you want to change the actual smart art design. What if you want to change it? Now, if you notice right now, those special tabs are not there. This is another one of those hidden features that's a little tricky. If you wonder where they went, click on the smart art. Now you'll see that they've returned back at the top. Then we can click on design. And over here in the layout group, you can actually change. If you, if you want to pick a completely different style of arrows or different smart art altogether, you can still go back and change it very quickly. So once you get there, it's really easy to use and pretty intuitive once you find those hidden buttons. You can also go to the format tab and fine tune the fill, uh, move it forward or backwards in the slide and so on. Powerful stuff here. Well, there you have it, a hidden feature that's really powerful. I wish I had had that in my fingertips back in the day and the resources and the knowledge I have today. It's been a long road to get to where I am now with my presentations and the skills I use and share with people every day, but it's been very rewarding seeing what people can do when they have the right resources in their fingertips. I look forward to staying in touch with you. Let me know what questions you have, what's working well for you. You can email me or reach out to me in any uh, social channel you prefer. And I would encourage you to go ahead and sign up for my regular Vertical Lessons newsletter so that I can keep in touch with you. On occasion, I will send you a blog or a relevant article related to building momentum, getting out of your comfort zone, and getting what's important done every day. This is Manly at verticallessons.com.